let's take a look at some of the blood flow around the body. You want to make sure you always know which artery and which vein leads to the next one. You want to make sure you know them in order and know where they're at and what they're taking blood to. So let's trace a drop of blood from your heart all the way out to your right fingers. If you're going to leave that left ventricle going out to the body somewhere, you're always going to start with that aorta. That's your first artery. when You're talking about blood leaving that left ventricle going out to the body somewhere. So if you're going to go towards your right fingers, you follow that aorta up and it's going to branch off. Remember that arch has three branches and the first one, the brachiocephalic artery, goes towards the upper right part of your chest. Now continue that on out. We're going towards the fingers. Out from there, that brachiocephalic will turn into the right subclavian once it's deep to the clavicle. The name tells you right where it's at. Then it's going to pass under your arm in the axillary region and become the axillary artery. That artery will be well protected up under your arm. That's why it's found deep in that region. After the axillary region, it's going to change into the brachial artery. Should have learned from a previous chapter that the brachial region is the region from your shoulder to your elbow. So that's what you'd call that artery in that region there. Get down into your forearm and it's going to split into the radial and ulnar. So two big arteries. Remember the bones by that name found in that region. The radius is thumb side and the ulna is little finger side. So don't forget where those two arteries are located. Then in the palm of the hand, you'll have the palmar arteries. And then in the fingers, you'll have digital. Now, if you were to leave the heart and go to the left fingers instead, everything here would be exactly the same, except no brachiocephalic. Brachiocephalic, first branch off that arch, only goes towards the right side of the chest. So everything else would be the same, but no brachiocephalic if you went to the left fingers. Look at blood flow leaving the heart and going down to your toes. So once again, we're going to start with the aorta. Go all the way down to the very bottom of that aorta. Somewhere around L2, it's going to split into that left and right common iliac. Follow either one of those down, becomes the external iliac. Then as soon as you get into your lower limb, it's going to become the femoral and deep femoral. And remember that femoral region is that region from your hip to your knee. Then this artery is going to pass behind your knee becoming the popliteal artery. The popliteal region is that region behind your knee. Now you're going to get down in that leg or curl region. Remember, leg or curl region is the region from your knee to your ankle. Now here, once it goes down past your knee, remember this blood is going away from the heart. What arteries do? It's going to split into three arteries. There are two associated with the tibia. Remember, the tibia is the larger weight-bearing bone down in your leg, right? It's the bone that's found medial when you talk about the tibia, tibia and the fibula. So this tibia has two arteries associated with it, one to the front, an anterior tibial artery, one behind it, a posterior tibial artery, and then lateral to those is the fibular artery. So that bone, the fibula, is lateral. Then you get down into your ankle, you have the dorsalis pedis, then again the digital and the toes. And it would not matter which toes you went to from the heart, this is going to be the same sequence. Let's also look at some differences between arteries and veins. Now remember the number one way by far that you define artery and vein is by looking at the direction of the blood flow. Arteries always take blood away from the heart, veins back towards it. Practically all your arteries are going to be high in oxygen, where the veins are going to be low. But the pulmonary artery and veins are an exception to that. <clears throat> also with your arteries, practically all of them are low in carbon dioxide, and the veins will be high in it. But again, the pulmonary are the exception to that rule there. Arteries have thick walls, much stronger, they're better because of all the high pressure that's found inside of them. Veins coming back from the tissues have much thinner walls because they've got lower pressure. So they don't need such a thick wall to hold that pressure back. Arteries will not have valves in them. The pressure is so high in the arteries, you don't ever have to worry about backflow in one of those. Veins have very low pressure, so you do need the valves in those, especially those veins which are below your heart, and especially those down in the lower limbs. The body also likes to keep the arteries as deep as possible. 
That's a good idea because of the high pressure in them. You cut an artery because of that high pressure, you lose a lot of blood really fast. So the body tries to keep them deep, where a lot of your veins will run more superficial. And you can tell whether a vein is deep or superficial by comparing its name to an artery. If a vein has the same name as an artery, it's deep. That means it's beside the artery. Since all the arteries are deep, that vein would be too. But if you have a vein which has a name which is different from any artery, that vein will be superficial. So again, don't forget the pulmonary arteries and veins are exceptions to these gas rules, but those are some good differences between arteries and veins. So here's a little picture showing the heart and the two circulations and some other illustrations there. But again, let's leave the heart and go towards the right fingers. Leave the heart, you're going to go through the aorta. If you're going towards the right side, you're going to split into the brachiocephalic. That's going to become the right subclavian artery, <clears throat> then the right axillary, then the right brachial. Then you've got radial and ulnar, then palmar in the palm of the hand, digital in the fingers. Let's follow it down to a lower limb. Again, leaving the heart, start with the aorta. We're going to go through all those different parts of the aorta. Get down here around L2, splits into a common iliac. This would be the right one. Then an external iliac. Then femoral and deep femoral. Behind the knee, popliteal. And then down below that, two tibial and a fibular artery. Dorsalis pedis down in the ankle. And again, digital in the toes. It would not matter which toes you went to left or right. It would all be the same.